Hello everyone, welcome back yet again to another episode of the Cubane series. Series where we're trying to make Cubane, or like the one for dicarboxylate Cubane from household materials. And I have some sins to confess here. People who have been following this series know that last episode we, uh, I suppose, attempted to make a UV photoreactor out of uh, UV LEDs. I um, sort of screwed up the electronics a little bit. Well, maybe you wouldn't get that from the video, but if you scroll down to the comments, <laughs> it's pretty clear <laughs> that I got some things wrong. Because the main issue is that I knew the LEDs were only rated for 40 milliamps. In fact, I, I, I said that, and then at some point I decided that I was overthinking that 40 milliamp number and decided to pump 900 milliamps through the LEDs, 2,200% what they're rated for. And these have been on for about a minute and a half. Yeah, like they're, they're pretty dang hot. That's, that's, that's burning temperature, so that's, that's real hot. That's not a great way of driving an LED, <laughs> exceeding its uh, current capacity by, you know, a, a long, long way. And people were genuinely surprised um, at how well the LEDs held up under such abuse and um, I think it's actually a good advertisement for this random AliExpress company um, that has no data sheet and no other information about the LEDs and but anyway thanks for the helpful comments no that's genuine um, you know people were actually very helpful and they introduced me to an electronic component called a resistor <laughs> and we're going to be using some resistors in this in this episode just so we get the correct amount of current to the LEDs, just straight from the from the power supply, like the 19 volt power supply, run it through some resistors and get 40 milliamps out. It wasn't that hard, I just didn't think about it properly. I'm gonna make amends, um, and we're not forgetting that this is a chemistry channel, so I'm not gonna bloody spend ages on the engineering. In fact, let's just do a montage, all right? I got new heat sinks, I got five volt timers, I got new LEDs, let's just put it all together, then we can get back to actually trying to make some cubane. Let's get back to the chemistry, all right? Let's do it. Let's, let's just build a photoreactor right now. How hard could it be? This has been running for um, a couple minutes now, maybe eight minutes. It's on a duty cycle of uh, like 90% on, 10% off. So every uh, 54 seconds, it has six seconds of cooldown time. So, you know, you can see that these LEDs are off and then they're on again. You can see that glow of the uh, hot glue as it fluoresces. So that's excellent. It's not getting too hot. These heat sinks aren't really getting very hot, even though I don't have the cooling fan on. But yeah, it's really not heating up too much. What is heating up though is these resistors, as sort of expected, these are getting pretty dank hot. Yeah. So I will, ow, <laughs> my poor fingertips. <laughs> I've got this device to measure temperature, but the human inclination to grab things to see if they're hot or not. Anyway, so this bloody thing can cool the resistors down. I mean, the resistors are rated for it. They're like uh, one watt resistors, I think. So it should be all right. I reckon this can run all day, honestly, uh, this current, which is far better than the previous setup. Right, we've done it, we've built it. How are we going to run our bloody samples? Previously, we've run our samples with uh, borosilica glass, um, just these small vials, you know, ones like these vials, and, and we're obviously going to get some losses through the glass because the glass absorbs pretty well below 350 nanometers, and we're using, what, 310 nanometer LEDs. But the glass is thin enough that we just said, ah, oh, you know, stuff the losses, you know, we'll, we'll be all right. We'll just have to pump more light into there to compensate. That's a very questionable approach, to put it nicely. <laughs> but 
the, the only real alternative is to get some quartz glassware. And that is very expensive um, and a bit specialist, so I've been trying to avoid going there, but I have got a small bit of quartz from eBay. No prizes for uh, guessing the country of origin. This is a, a, a quartz bloody cuvette. Excellent, so this is this is pretty standard quartz cuvette. It's got this uh, quite nice fitting Teflon lid. Yeah, obviously there's an immediate drawback in that this fits three mils of liquid, which is like the largest cuvette you can get. That's not a lot of cubane precursor we can fit into each run, but as a proof of concept, this is the best thing to do. So if we can at least get it working with the LEDs uh, as they are and, and the quartz, and if that works, so we can start thinking about how we would expand this, whether we buy a very expensive, say 50 mil quartz flask, and we just try and put the whole quartz flask in there. It should be enough room in this bloody Milo tin. Or we could try and do something more uh, like complex, like getting some quartz tubing and trying to pump the solution around in front of the LEDs, which will probably help with cooling as well, because I uh, actually don't know how hot it gets internally in there. And once again, we're running it in dichloromethane, so we can't let it get over 40 degrees, because otherwise the dichloromethane is gonna boil and everything will get very bad. And in fact, we really don't want it to get to like 30 degrees, because with these sort of photochemical reactions, if they start to get hot, that tends to drive side reactions. And so as a first step, why don't we um, just put some dichloromethane in this cuvette and put the cuvette in the uh, reactor, the photoreactor, and see how much it heats up, whether it's gonna boil or not, or it's just gonna be fine for hours. A heat sinking to the outside, that's why we're not heat sinking to the can, because we don't want the can to heat up, we just want the heat to dissipate out. Yeah, we got the fan on, should be all right. sitting in there for just a bit over half an hour it's fine it didn't heat up at all I mean I say it's fine it's actually not fine at all <laughs> the heat is fine the evaporation rate is not if it gets really concentrated it won't absorb the light as well uh, and also it starts to drive side reactions and stuff if we start concentrating it and also I guess all our molecules are in just in that little section so, and the UV light is obviously coming in all around. So the amount of molecules actually exposed to the UV light really decreases. So we don't want it to get concentrated. That lid is too leaky. I thought it would be okay. But it's also another problem. Um, I just said I was gonna put this in and run it for half an hour, but uh, that took me genuinely six months to do. <laughs> so sorry if things weirdly got dirty and this got rusty like in between shots, but yeah, damn. So it's summer now here. I was trying to keep this temperature below 30 degrees. Well, the ambient temperature is now 30 degrees and it will be for the next three months. So <laughs> we might have to come up with a bit better cooling system than what I was doing six months ago, which was fine because it was, you know, 15 degrees or so, but now it's um, 30 to 40 degrees in here. I don't know, maybe there's a better solution too. Maybe I'll think of a better solution. Fridge. What if I just fucking ran it in a fridge? That's a, that's an idea, right? I mean, it's not the newest of fridges, but um, I believe it still gets cold. So, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at this bad boy go. Yeah, that's getting cold. Hell yeah, it's getting heaps cold. Fuck yeah. Bathurst 2017, access all areas. Fuck yeah. 
Just because it looks like it's been in a train wreck doesn't mean it doesn't work. Fuck yeah. Do I need the fan in there? What do you think? Is putting the fan in there stupid? It's not going to get any airflow otherwise. The fan's just going to blow the... No, oh, fucking not put the fan in. Whatever. Why not? <laughs> it was the 240 volt line, I wouldn't do this, but it's fine. It's not going to cut the wires. It's all right. It's mostly sealed. <laughs> I'm trying to console myself here. She'll be right. She'll be right. Got to say, one obvious negative of uh, abandoning this lab for six months. Well, I was in and out, but I wasn't here for that long. Some absolute monster spiders have moved in. Have a look at this funnel web. They're not like the Sydney funnel webs. Apparently, they can't kill me, but they do hurt, apparently. Where is that guy's little face? When he's popped his little head out of the funnel. Yeah, I see ya. I wonder if I can coax him out with a really long stick. Hold on. No, he doesn't want to play. All right, so we've got a full cuvette again. Let's run this in half an hour for half an hour under the UV lights. I'll try it without the fan on. Let's let's just try it without the fan on for half an hour. See how hot everything gets. Should be fine without the fan. I'll take the fan out. It looks stupid in there. And then maybe the lack of airflow as well as the, uh, you know, the cold temperatures means we won't evaporate so much DCM. I suppose another alternative I just thought about is we could go back to carbon tap. I say back to, as in like, do the 60s or 80s method and use carbon tet. It's a lot less volatile, so it wouldn't evaporate. But let's not use carbon tet. <laughs> um, all right, I'll, I'll get this in here. I'm going to need two hands because loading it into this tin is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. It's, it's been 30 minutes. How are we looking? Resistors are cold, heat sinks are cold. I'm sure we could pump way more power into this. Yeah, look, the timing level has dropped. It's still pretty good though, I still think. I think the Teflon tape's making it worse. I might take that Teflon tape off. <laughs> I think it's making it worse. Look, I don't know, I, I'm ready. Let's run it. Let's run this photochemistry reaction. Let's get some bloody solid out. It's been so long. How is it going? It's obviously an important question to ask, how are our reagents? Because a lot of them have been sitting around for uh, years at this point. So how are they holding up and how are our supplies going? Because obviously at some point I'm gonna to have to go back, make more Cubane, because I'm gonna run out of end product, especially if this step uh, continues to not work. So the monoketal, look, uh, and I'll say this, all I can do is judge on appearances at this point. The monoketal, the, the stuff that crystallized out, the stuff that we confirmed was of great purity, looks fine. I mean, it's still crystalline, it's all good. These are all being stored in the dark, but uh, just at room temperature and not a very stable room temperature either, so yeah. The dimer, the diketal, the stuff we convert into the monoketal, that looks okay, we've got quite a bit of that. This was our reaction flask for the monoketal, so we've got a bit of stuff in there as well. Next time I'll run the hydrolysis of the diketal into the monoketal, I'll just run it in there because that solid is just a mixture of mono and diketal. The one that doesn't look okay is this tribromide. So this is the tribromide, the stuff we turn into the diketal. And look, it, 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 it's doing what you'd expect a tribromide um, <laughs> organic compound to do. It sort of breaks down, releases a bit of bromine and stuff, which further degrades it, so um, I'm not sure if this one is going to be any usable anymore. Maybe it might clean up okay. Maybe it's worth just running in the reaction and seeing how we go, but in future I don't think I'll stop at this step. There's no point keeping product, especially if this product is so stable and stores so well. There's no reason to stay at this tribromo. Cyclopentanone ether, September 2020. Holy moly, that, that is over two years ago. So this was the stuff we vacuum distilled. It looks okay, it doesn't look cloudy, it doesn't look like there's any water separated out from it. So look, we won't have to go all the way back to adipic acid. I don't think so. So we should be able to start from here and at least get a couple of grams of, uh, of this product. And then the UV reaction, we can keep going forward from there. It's not quite tar yet, but give it another year and it will be tar. It's even getting sticky in there, it feels like. God damn.
per usual, nothing is ever easy. Here is our plate, and we can see in each column there's two dots. But uh, that first row is our starting material. So we've got that first dot in the starting material. So it looks like, once again, a contamination dot from somewhere. Look, I haven't exposed the dichloromethane to any plastic this time. Because <laughs> last time we got two dots, I got very excited, but the 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 dot was just from the DCM sitting in some plastic and, and taking a plasticizer from that plastic. Look, I'm preventing myself from getting excited once again. We've got to work out why that first lane is getting, getting a, a second dot. So let's run some more bloody TLC. Oh, he's vaguely back. He's not sticking his little head out. They usually like sit with their face in the little hole. He's a, he's a big boy. Is he going to attack me? Lot. No, that's fair enough. Like for reference, you know, it's probably as big as my, well, not quite as big as my thumb. He lives in my walls. He's in my walls. He's in my walls. All right, this is more what we want to see. No dot in the first lane, which is just our uh, dichloromethane. Um, so there's no contamination on dichloromethane. We've got one dot for our starting material in the middle lane and then two dots for our reaction mix that's been running for two hours in the photo reactor fridge, let's say. Photo fridge. I don't know why there's two dots in the other line for this one for our starting material because that was starting material after 20 minutes and after 60 minutes. Maybe, I don't know. But look, the starting material is good. So this is, I mean, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit excited. I still can't explain it, but um, however, a good test is once again, we've got our permanganate stain, which actually looks okay after several months in storage. So that's surprising, but good. We should expect there to be two dots under the permanganate stain. If we see two dots under the permanganate stain, but only one dot under the, the, uh, the UV light, we could start to be a little bit more certain that it's actually our product we're making, not just some random contaminant I'm sick of this contamination shit. All right, so we've only got one spot under the uh, permanganate stain. So we get two spots under the iodine stain and only one spot under the UV torch and the permanganate stain. I don't know, does that check out? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to think on this for a few days. Hopefully not a few months. A few days. All right, I've given it a few days thought and I've come to the conclusion I think it's working. We are forming some product, I, I think. But of course I have to confirm it's not just other some other random contaminant and really the only source it could come from now is the cuvette. We'll see. So I've, I've got rid of the old solution, really washed the cuvette, some new solid, put it in there, confirm this is only one spot before we put it in the photoreactor, leave it for a, a few hours. Let's see if we can get, we're only putting like a single milligram in. I wanna see if I can push it all the way to the product. Surely, it's only a milligram. I just all I want is the proof of concept at this point. I wanna be able to run this on the gram scale. If it's gonna take eight hours to convert a single milligram, let's let's not think about that just yet. All right, this is a proof of concept video. So I'll run TLC, this is just blank DCM in there. I'll run that on the plate, put just a little bit of material in, run that on the plate, confirm that there's just the starting material in there, and then any product we see forming from there is in fact the product and not just some random contaminant that's, that's getting carried in. There's no way, there's no way it happened again. No, do not tell me this happened again. There's a dot in the first column, which is literally just dichloromethane that I put into the cuvette, put the lid on, shook up, and then put on the TLC plate. And look, there's a spot. So that product spot, the product spot that we've been detecting, is just coming from the cuvette. We must be leaching something from the Teflon lid. None of this has been in the photoreactor at all. It's infuriating. Because I felt like I was very slow to get my hopes up. Once again, it's not even the reaction. It's just, it's just detecting whether it works or not. It's so infuriating. Oh, that's it. I'm fucking going back to the lamps. I'm fucking, let's, let's, I fuck, I don't know what else to do. Let's just go back to the lamps. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. Oh man.
after half an hour, the solvent level hasn't dropped that much. I mean, it's dropped. It's definitely dropped. Well, that's not too bad. I ran this cuvette in front of the lamps for like a couple hours. I lost quite a bit of solvent, but not heaps. I did have to jam the lid in so much that I had to use the the pliers to get the lid off <laughs> which is probably not very good for the cuvette long term but at least it kept most of the solvent in so first column is our starting material we expect that dot to be there we know that dot is going to be there by now that's all good the middle column is after one hour and then the third column is after two hours and the dot has disappeared all three lanes here are after three hours and like i put heaps on that third column but we see no evidence of starting material anymore. So that's that's really good. We no longer have starting material in our mix. But where is the product? We need to be able to detect the product. <laughs> Otherwise, we could just be turning into tar. And, and how do we know? So we've maybe converted the whole one milligram. Anyway, let's all chuck it in the iodine chamber. We want to see a product spot. Where is it? Where's the product? So we see in our starting material, we've obviously got our starting material dot and our mysterious contamination dot from, let's say, the Teflon, sure. That Teflon dot obviously is carried through. And then after two hours, we see a little bit of the, the Teflon dot, but no starting material dot. But no other dot either. Like, where's it gone? What's happened to it? All right, and here's our plate on all the runs are after three hours. We see virtually no dots. Yeah, look, we've got a little bit of a streak here. That's our Teflon impurity. And all the other dots are still on the starting line. That's really where all our product has gone. That one's streaked, I guess, because I've overloaded it. But still, the only dots that the iodine is picking up is uh, along the baseline, which leads to two possibilities. One, um, along the baseline implies it's like quite polar molecules. So what the lamps could be doing is turning our starting material into tar. Could just be generating tar. That's what the main criticisms of the lamps are, that they're just like a tar machine. They're just gonna turn it to tar, which is why we initially moved to LEDs. Uh, the other option is that none of our stains are picking up the final product. Just such an unsettling thought, because what if we've been making it this whole time and neither the lamp, the permanganate stain, or the iodine is picking up where the hell the product is. I genuinely don't know what to do. So I, I value your comments. Please, you know, comment. You don't have to be some sort of PhD professor in this to have ideas. I obviously have done a lot of stupid ideas and some of the stupid ideas have worked really well. You know, there are a lot of people commenting on the electronics. You know, I value all the electronics stuff as well. But if you are a PhD level person or a professor or something, and I've got a few comments from people who have said, hey, I do cubane chemistry, etc. If you have this molecule, maybe you could just send me some, two milligrams, 10 milligrams, because then I could like run the TLC of a known material uh, and know if I can detect it with my stains, etc. So that would be like very helpful. So maybe this is a bit of a long shot, does anyone have this molecule and they can just send it to my P.O. box? Please contact me anywhere. Twitter, Reddit, Discord. Um, just, you know, yell my name loud enough. We're committed to this project. We want to see it through to the end and I want to finish this project within a year. A year is a long time, but seeing as it's taken us over two years to get to this point, Trying to finish it within a year is, we need to get a move on. We really do need to get a move on with this project. Maybe. <laughs> no, no maybes. We'll fucking get there, right? We fucking better get